Welcome back. Instacart kicks off its roadshow today, targeting a valuation that's just about a quarter of its worth during a 2021 fundraising round and what could be a bleak sign for tech IPOs this year. Deirdre Bosa joins us now for today's Tech Check. Deirdre, listen, I, I love it. I love it because for everybody else outside of the IPO world and the bankers and, you know, you know, the, the public investor is going to get this at a much more uh, decent valuation. Right. They're not buying it at the peak. At least we know that, right? It was that valued at nearly $40 billion in this last round. So that's going to create some losers. I've been looking at this list, Kelly. 38 investors in that round, many of them first-time new investors. A lot of them follow on as well, though. The Sequoia, the Andreessen Horowitz that will make money from this because they were there in the early rounds. But this is interesting because if you look back to the IPOs of 2019 and 2021 when we saw those big booms, and you really, we look back now and the retail investors, they bought them at the peak. And look at this. This is the Renaissance IPO ETF. And it tells you that if you bought a lot of the names of the last few years on their IPO dates, when they saw that pop, um, they would have lost money by now and certainly underperformed some of the major indexes. So this could be, I'm with you, Kelly, this could be a very positive development and a chance for retail investors to get into a household name like Instacart that has been around forever but is only now investable to them. Real quick, because we're about to speak to the analysts for more granularity, Deirdre, but you covered DoorDash. And the, would, would you consider DoorDash a rival for Instacart? It's hard to say. Um, they both do delivery. Instacart has larger basket sizes, right, because it's groceries versus food delivery. But they're both starting to encroach on each other's space. Uh, DoorDash is moving into groceries. They're building up its advertising model. Instacart's already there. So it's trying to be a little bit more like DoorDash in terms of offering different <laughs> kinds of e-commerce e-commerce goods on their platform. So that is seen as, you know, the closest comp. But I will say that Instacart will, at least it's at the top range of its pricing, is offered at a discount to DoorDash. So DoorDash perhaps seen as yes. still the more interesting play. Great point. Deirdre, thank you very much, our Deirdre Bosa. And sticking with the topic, DoorDash shares are jumping because Jeffrey's upgraded the stock today from underperformed to hold, citing some underappreciated tailwinds. Joining me now is John Colantoni, the analyst behind that call. John, uh, welcome. I thought it was interesting what Deirdre just said, that in some ways Instacart wants to emulate DoorDash. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so our analysis, uh, you know, shows two things. One, that the advertising business is just getting started and that underlying performance of unit economics is getting better and will continue to get better. And, you know, I think one of the things that did give us more confidence around improving unit economics was the Instacart disclosures hmm. from the IPO, where they showed that the grocery, a pure play grocery business can be profitable, can have a large advertising business. And that gave us more confidence to assume better profitability for DoorDash's own grocery and convenience business, which was the major swing factor in driving our increased EBITDA assumptions. That's really interesting. You know, it, it still strikes me as maybe not a great sign that a close comparison for Instacart was basically an underperform <laughs> at the time when the company is trying to go public. But like you said, it can still make money on these transactions. I guess the question for Instacart and for DoorDash are, you know, how, how, what is growth like these days? From what I understand, DoorDash's overall revenue growth, their sales growth is better than Instacart's. But why do you think that these numbers are, um, you know, they're not 30%, it's not, it's not cloud computing. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that DoorDash has done better than we expected is they've been able to deliver sustained growth in their core underlying U.S. restaurant delivery business. And it's been in the mid-teens, according to our assumptions, which is very important because that business actually de delivers over 100 percent of the, company, the company's total profitability. But I think that what they've been able to do is layer in things on top of the restaurant, U.S. restaurant delivery business, including international restaurant delivery and grocery and convenience. And one of our concerns was that these new businesses, it would be more difficult, it would be difficult for them to make them profitable. And I think that what the Instacart disclosure has shown us is that they could potentially be profitable over the long term. And so if the businesses that are 
delivering more of your future growth are are seeing improved profitability yeah. that i think that that is that is a positive for the overall profitability of the company. No, that's really, uh, look, that's, it's perfectly timed uh, for the discussion that we'll be having around Instacart as, as my groceries are on their way to the, <laughs> to the house from Costco as we speak. So then you mentioned advertising, and I just want to drill down quickly before you go. How important is something like advertising to the model of a DoorDash or an Instacart going forward? I mean, how, how big can that really be for them? The advertising business is is very vital to the profitability of the company. Uh, advertising comes through at very high incremental margins, and if they can drive a large advertising business, then that is really a po very uh, it's a positive for overall profit improvement for the company over time. You know, we think it doesn't need to be uh, you know it's not uh, it doesn't need to be Amazon levels of profit penetration for this business model to work. We're assuming less than 2% penetration of gross bookings wow. from the advertising business over time. And despite that, we have EBITDA estimates that are about 10% ahead of consensus. Interesting. And I think the grocery and, and, and convenience business is actually where we see advertising penetration being highest. Yeah. And that's largely because it has more exposure to enterprise customers, CPG customers, and they have a larger advertising budget. So I think, again, that's another thing that we learn from the Instacart disclosures. Yeah, I'm always so bored scrolling these apps. I'm like, I would, I would take advertising. Please just give me some idea for dinner and I'll take it. John, we'll leave it there. Really appreciate you joining us today.